Hey guys, I'm just going to start the show with a little email today. This is from Roshanak. Roshanak? That's a cool name. It's a cool name. That's a really cool name. (laughs) It says, Hi, I'm Roshi. Cool shortening of Roshanak. A high school student in Sweden who very much enjoys your podcast. It made me laugh and I genuinely gain a lot of information from it. Congratulations, just Corey, because me and James (laughs) provide none of the information. In your most... In your more recent episodes, you've been mentioning a diabetes a lot, and when the topic comes up, I get weirdly excited because I have type 1 diabetes. That's good that we somehow didn't offend people <laughs> with diabetes, because I was a little bit worried about that. I don't know why, but there's a weirdly inclusive feeling for diabetes to be mentioned. Cool. Also, Luke, your episode, The Time Traveling Twins, really helped the discussion in my philosophy class, so thanks for that. You're welcome. Probably the we are trying to return to science, but <laughs> I, I tried to make it about philosophy, and I'm very happy about that. So you're very welcome, Roshi. I'm not sure where I'm going with this email. Just wanted to let you guys that you make my week a little bit better. Keep up the amazing work, Roshi. Roshi, fantastic. Rushy. That's Rushy. made me so happy. Thanks, Roshi. That's a nice email. Let's start the show. <laughs> Welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co hosts, Jam and Luke Cutler. I'm a go host now. Go host? <laughs> it caught in my throat. <laughs> this week, we'll be talking about Soviet survival and cosmonaut capers. In March of 1965, two Soviet cosmonauts had to face freezing conditions. And other things. Ooh. Ooh. While not in space. What? They crashed wow. hundreds of hundreds of miles off course. Were they in like, Antarctica or something? No, they were they were in Russia. Ah. Or Soviet. This is, I don't know where it is. Soviet. Somewhere that's now area. Russia. Yeah. Populated Antarctica. Or it's not Russia anymore. Soviet Union. Okay. I don't know geography. Good job. Once mm. again, this is not the geography, guys. <laughs> this is jo- episode jog two guys. of Jog Guys. So I'll give you guys a little bit of background as to what happened. Basically, two Soviet cosmonauts were up in space and tried to get down from space, but landed way off course and ended up in the woods. Not very good at their job. They didn't didn't even get to space, did they? I mean, they did get to space. They They were in space. They they did their biz. They didn't land in space. James, you can't land in space. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) This thing's in space to land on. (laughs) No, you're not in space. space. You're on the rock. (laughs) You're on the space station. In space. Technically, we're all in space right now, so. You know, we're on Earth, which is different to space. No, 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 we're in space. (laughs) Everything is space. There's space in us as well, in between parts of your atoms. It's mostly space. I don't like this. Uh, I was watching a documentary this week about uh, string theory. And it had a comparison of, <laughs> sorry, yeah. I want to point out, Luke was watching this documentary on string theory whilst trying to recover from being ill. Yeah, I, I yeah, you told me that. <laughs> yeah, a I'm a mess. Days ago, I, I don't like, know what's wrong with me. When I say I don't like science on this podcast, I actually freaking love science. Um, but yeah, it was talking about how if you took the, the Empire State Building and crushed it building. down to the size of not having any space between the parts of the atoms, it would be the size of a grain of rice. So like, right. that's just stupid. The idea that we think anything exists is hilarious. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys were on the Voxod 2, which is Russian for Sunrise 2. Very cute. Yes. Sunrise. Ah, I guess. Voxod. <laughs> like, a little less cute than Sunrise. Voxod. Look at the beautiful Voxod. It's a very aggressive language. <laughs> so I guess you guys are asking. Are we? Well, I hope you are. We are. What happened to the I, Voxod 1? I was just asking oh, that. Oh, God, yeah. What happened to the Voxod 1? We want to one? know. Not much. It went up into space. It, it, the people in it didn't have any spacesuits on. Right. At all. But it was airtight, I assume. Well, obviously. They are not dead. I don't know, man. Well, but they are now. Before but... we knew what space was like, <laughs> we could have just not been sure and sent people up without spacesuits. <laughs> this was in uh, 1964. Um, it was uh, a lot. There were a lot of firsts on the Voxod 1. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was the first... Uh, space flight to carry more than one crew member. Uh, mm. The first without spacesuits, and the first to have an engineer or physician. Can I ask mm. a really like teenage boy question? Go ahead. How, <laughs> when you said there's been lots of firsts in space, has anyone had sex in space yet? That's exactly not, what I was don't thinking. Think that you can have sex in space. What? I'm okay. So last I checked, you might not be able to have sex in space. What do you mean last? Is you it because? Checked? Is it because? I don't check often. I just you know it comes up. I don't know. Is it vacuum sealed? I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> James, that's not why. It's it's the microgravity that's the issue, not no, the fact that you're in a spacesuit. It's, it's definitely the vacuum. 
Uh, yeah, so the, the, the Voxod 1 uh, got to 336 kilometers, which is 209 miles, which, as we know, is definitely space. That's definitely space. For the Americans as well. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Finally, some agreement between the US <laughs> and Russia. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they just got rid of the three spacesuits because they didn't have enough space for them. Enough space. Enough. They have plenty of space. They it's, were in space. It's called space. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have enough space inside the spaceship. Sure. Because they were they cramming. They should have put more space inside the spaceship then. Well, they would have died. That's why you need a space suit. Oh, yeah. To be in space. That's true. Yeah. So they wanted to have three people on, but it was designed to carry two people. So they thought, well, if we just get rid of the space suits, then we have enough space right. for a third you, person. You can just sit on my lap. <laughs> so long as they go. don't get out of the spaceship, they'll be fine. And yeah. they were. <laughs> as long as they don't get out of the spaceship yeah just don't get out but i think there were only two chairs as well so until they removed until they removed them all on someone's them, lap I'm don't you really don't you hate it when you get on the tube and there's no seat basically that except all the way to, all the way to space <laughs> please move down all the way into the spaceship and some guy's got his bloody to bag on you know <laughs> please mind the gap between the train and the end of the universe <laughs> <laughs> so that's the voxod one um then they moved on to the voxod two which is the one we're going to be talking about and they ended with the Voxhood 2, by the way. They didn't do any more. Fun. Oh. Yeah, I don't know why. I really like trilogies. So that's disappointing. Well, unfortunately, this is a duology. That's one for, yeah, the, that, that's one that, for the title of the podcast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the Sexy Space Duology. Oh, stop it. <laughs> so on the Voxhood 1, we had the commander, who was Pavel Belyayev. Yes. Do you want to give that another shot? Nope. Okay. <laughs> who else? Uh, he was. Uh, that was his only space flight. There was also the pilot who was Alexei Leonov. That was his first space flight. So Alexei went on to do more after that. But uh, that name does sound familiar, actually. It, I mean, most Russians. You, That's true. You're probably going to be called Alexei. To be honest, it's like the John of Russia, isn't it? That's like the Alex. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they went up on the 18th of March in 1965. And uh, the Voxhod 2 was actually really important because it was the first ever space trip to have a spacewalk. But, space but they walk. had spacesuits, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. These, these guys did. Okay. But uh, there were... Very nice. Yeah, there were a few issues when he went out into space. Obviously, he had to be wearing an EVA, which is... Uh, Electronic... Oh, 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 uh, velocity. Velocity. Is it it begins with E. <laughs> uh, electronic. Electronic. No. Velocity. Uh, no, no, you're all wrong. Uh, amulet. Electric. Yes, he wore a single amulet around his neck, <laughs> which protected him from the. <laughs> Hooray! Taken from the tomb of Tutankhamun. <laughs> <laughs> I go to see Tutankhamun and Kamun in a few weeks. Really? Well, you hanging out again? Yeah, yeah. Me yeah. And him. How is We're it? catching up. We fell out for a bit. <laughs> it's an He's extra. Lost some weight. <laughs> He's lost some weight. Yeah. yeah, he's just dust now. That's quite a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> an EVA is an extra vehicular activity. Okay. Just that sounds like a spacey word for sex. <laughs> We're going to partake in an extra vehicular activity. We're going to sex in the mm. cold vacuum of space. <laughs> it's the only way to keep warm. <laughs> that is potentially the most unsexy place. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. No, James. I don't. No, no. Space is quite like that's quite romantic. I think like it's just you and them. You're just up floating in the in the, the vastness of the space. Cold, See a bitter, nebula like off in the space. distance. It's really nice. I think that's lovely. Have you not seen Wally? Wouldn't you freeze and hole? boil? Well, sure, you'd freeze and boil, James. Not, like, not but you could have like a shared space suit, like a like a you could call it a, no an oh. extravehicular activity suit. Dual duology. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not seen that scene in Wally -E where they have the whole like uh -E -D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In mm -hmm. in Wally. -E. Mm -hmm. In Wally. -E. Do they have sex in Wally? -E? No, they, no. I mean kind of <laughs> Wally -E and Eve Eva, Eve, they like yeah. dance around in space. And it's they're lovely. robots. It's very romantic. It's lovely. Because they're robots. What do you mean they dance romantically because they're robots? Robots don't no. dance romantically. That's the whole point. They yeah, don't, they that's don't why die. It's lovely, they James. don't die. So I was telling you about how Alexi and Pavel. Pavel? Pavel. Yes. Were one of the first people to do a spacewalk. Yes. I lied because it's not both of them. It was just Alexi that did oh, it. Okay. Yes, oh, okay. Yes, for lying, man. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> it happens sometimes. Only give us the facts. So uh, it was on March 18th. March? March 18th. March. It was on March 18th, 1965 at 8.28 UTC. It was depressurized, the airlock, for Leonov to go out. And at 8.32, he opened the airlock hatch to go outside and... Then he leaves the airlock at 8.34. 
It took him two minutes to leave the airlock. I know, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> what you do? It's really right? slow work. I assume you go slower in space. It took him six. Well, not really. It, you're not really encumbered by by air resistance, so realistically, you should be going faster. Okay. But um, it took him six minutes to get out of the door, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was out there. <laughs> Sometimes it takes me to get six minutes out of a door. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was out for about 12 minutes, uh, but it didn't go quite as planned. How so? He was out there. And he, was, he was supposed to attach a camera onto you know, a bracket on the outside and then take a picture with his spacesuit. Why did you point at you your put, chest put like your... he's a Teletubby? Because that's where the camera is. Oh, I wow. Thought... Like, yeah, so he, like there's two oh. cameras. So he attached one to a like bracket. A reverse Teletubby. Well, he has a camera rather than a screen on his chest. Oh. Yeah. So, oh. okay. <laughs> Someone else with a television or something. This is something that's actually relevant. So in 1969, obviously there's pictures of uh, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong on the moon. Supposedly. And, right. Here's the thing. <laughs> People that are fools will tell you, oh, how did they take the pictures? when you can't see a camera in the reflection sure. of... Do you really think they took a camera <laughs> up into space? No, they're attached to the space. The yeah. That's spacesuit. so cool. Yeah. Wow. So the spacesuits had cameras in the but chest. are there any pictures of both of them in the same picture? I mean, I don't think so. Let's and if they, look it up. But if there, if there are, then there will be, there'll be cameras <laughs> on the... There'll be cameras just <laughs> course, on the landing board. Of course you can't operate a camera with a spacesuit on. It'd be really hard, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be the first selfie, wouldn't it? Yeah. In space. That'd be great. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he attached it all right, uh, but that's when things started to go wrong. Uh, he couldn't really take a picture with a camera on his chest because his spacesuit had kind of expanded too much. Oh, yeah, and it had gotten like he wasn't able to move his fingers well enough to operate the camera. Weird. Yeah, because I mean, because he's out in the vacuum of space and it's full of air, obviously. Sure. Hmm. So so it expanded and he wasn't able to do it. So he decided to go back into the spaceship. Uh, when he got to the door, he couldn't really move his arms or legs. Because it had, because the spacesuit had basically expanded, ballooned up, it had gotten really stiff. So he was oh. like a big starfish in space. Yeah, yeah. effectively. <laughs> like he was like literally stuck there. So he was like, "What? Do I, what can I do?" Uh, he had to oh. release some of the air <gasps> from his suit. Wow! Yeah. Like doing a little space fart. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, bear in mind, obviously, you're Running in space. Balloon. Microgravity. Mm. If you start moving something, it's going to keep on moving basically forever. Mm. Mm. So a little bit of force in the wrong direction or too much force in the wrong direction could shit you off quite sure. a bit. Yeah. So he let a little bit of his air out uh, below the level that it was safe to do. So he was he was like mm. flying by the seat of his pants, essentially. And because it didn't have much air and he was able to move again and he was able to get back into the spaceship again after 12 minutes. But he was really, really close to just like dying in space. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, he had 40 minutes Ooh. before his life support would have... I would Just like that very fun. much to do a spacewalk before I'm dead, but it also does sound like the most terrifying thing in the, in yeah, the entire if, world. Because if, one, if you mess up, one thing goes wrong. You're just going to float away forever. forever. It's like tightrope walking without the rope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to do it if so you fall bad. Off, you just keep falling. I yeah. really hope commercial space flight, space flight is a thing before I'm like 80 and I can go up and mm. do it. Mm. But like, if you mess up, man, that's not a good, like, mm. although maybe it is a good thing. Maybe you just like, you'd get so zen out there if you were floating away. You were like, okay, there's nothing I can do. I may as well just like meditate, have a nice dream. I think they would mm. all just come with auto kill features. <gasps> They'd have to. Yeah, but you don't maybe. have to do it. No, you don't auto have to kill. What you mean? Like it just goes. You are not in the spaceship. Prepare no, you're to die. <laughs> no, it's like, like you press a button that kills. Yeah, yeah. Kills yeah. You, for you, you can just not choose the button. Yeah, not press the button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, but you probably would want to. Yeah, surely. If you're well, floating, I'd probably stay floating out there for a bit. If yeah. you're, if you, basically, if you, if you're going out, it's like into space at any speed. Mm. You're never going to see anything again. Yeah, but you could enjoy that for the time being. Yeah, no. And what I mean when is, you've got one like, minute of life. Spot if left, your you view on life kill. is that that like death is death and that's it, mm. then you may as well like prolong your life for as long as you possibly can, ex experiencing floating around mm. with no reference to anything. Get a bit chill, meditate a bit if you've never done that in your whole life. Like you've me got all the time in the world now. <laughs> Probably a good place. That to is meditate. the best. That is the best time to meditate, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. Free from all distractions. Yeah, because it's like if you're meditating with the goal of trying to work out the universe, mm. what better time than just before you're definitely about <laughs> to die? The thing is, as well, if you're moving, you're not accelerating. You're just moving at a constant, moving speed, at a constant speed, which you yeah. would be. Uh, 
it doesn't feel like you're moving yeah, at you're all. Just, exactly. You just feel you still. Just be sitting, you'd be sitting still while the whole universe is racing That's past you. That's true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. There's no but you would still get sick because you can see and all the stars would be spinning and the earth would well, be spinning. They probably wouldn't be. If you're spinning, it would be. But if you were just moving yes. directly along, mm. you probably wouldn't because the stars are so far away, they wouldn't be moving too much. God, that's horrible. But if you spun around, if you were spinning, like I mean, you'd be spinning. Very... Everything was spinning around yeah. you. Oh yeah, you'd be horrible. Spinning. Have you seen Gravity? Awful, awful time. <laughs> I haven't actually seen Gravity. I didn't see it in the cinema, so I decided really? I didn't want to see it. I understand. You should still see it. It's a cinema kind of film, though. Nah, put it on your laptop. Put I didn't, full screen. I didn't see it in cinema. Turn your eyes. Turn your turn eyes. Turn my off. eyes off. Turn the Close lights my off. Eyes turn the lights it. off. Yeah. Just watch and it. like sit really close to your screen. You're basically in the cinema. Just watch oh, it. Okay, dark. fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So Leonov got back into the spaceship which was quite lucky, but that's not where their problems ended. So he didn't actually tell, but he didn't tell any of this to the people down on earth, by the way, while he was, while he was letting his life support out, he didn't tell them because he thought, oh, they might freak out. For good reason. Yeah, yeah they, would. they would. Understandably they would, but he was like, mm, I'll keep this, I'll keep this one to myself. There's a reason they'd freak out. Yeah, but he was all right. So yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of worked out right. him. Yeah, good job. Okay. And the lesson is, don't listen to space control. Fair play to him. Uh, do your own thing, man. Break the rules. <laughs> it's cool. If it feels right, just do it. This is, the thing about this is, you'd think that space, space light would be something that's really well controlled, and there aren't very many mistakes, and everything goes to plan, or everyone dies. Oh, I wouldn't think that at all. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Most, <laughs> uh, most space strips have something go quite wrong. Yeah. And... Yeah. I guess in the grand scheme of things, we've not done that many. But that's why it's so important you send up someone who's like a fighter pilot so that they kind of know what to do in dangerous situations mm. rather than like me or mm. James. Yeah, <laughs> like, especially me. <laughs> yeah, like, just point it towards the ground. To expand yeah. on that, if you want to be an astronaut, you do need to, you need to basically be a pilot or something. You can't just be a scientist, usually. Damn. They, they take people with... <laughs> Damn, I Damn am a scientist, can't do it. <laughs> I have a science podcast <laughs> in which I know nothing. I suppose you're closer to a scientist than you are to a pilot. Hmm. No. Mm, I don't think so. Neither. No, okay. because you can't be I've a scientist a without a science degree, but you could be a pilot without a degree. You can just do pilot lessons. I've been in a... But then a degree is just science lessons. Yeah, but it's a piece of paper as well. There's a, there's a goal to cross, whereas... Whereas being a pilot is scalar. Like you get closer to being a pilot every time you try and practice to be a pilot. Whereas when you are a scientist, you could go and do a degree and do three years of work and then not pass and then fail. And then all the work was for nothing. Fair enough. Ha ha. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I just explained scalar something. I don't know. Good job, Luke. Thank so you. The, so the mission was 26 hours. Uh, and five minutes before they were scheduled to come back, they noticed a problem with their automatic guidance system. Fantastic. Which is not what you want. What was the problem? It wasn't working. Oh, <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, so the computer couldn't orient the spacecraft in space. It really mm. had no idea what was going on. So the best yeah. solution was obviously just to turn it off and on do again. it by eye. Was it running Windows Vista? It, this was long before <laughs> Windows Vista. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, explorer.exe has crashed. Windows Vista would have been really advanced. <laughs> it was Windows XP, probably. If computers on Earth use explorer.exe, do space computers use spaceexplorer.exe? That wasn't funny. I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee there. That's and just adding silence for, very just happy with myself. for just a little bit for you to feel bad about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so the computer couldn't figure out where the spacecraft was and they turned it off to, you know, basically do it by eye. Which if you're traveling at the speeds you're supposed to be traveling on re-entry is very, very scary. Bear in mm. mind, things burn up on re-entry. That's very fast. Um, so they shut off the landing program and decided to do another orbit around the Earth. To, you know, kind of Just casually do another <laughs> orbit around the <laughs> Earth. May as well. well. I mean, it's to kind of kill some time. Well, save some time, really. Kill, kill, kill some time. Slow down to give them no, Well, to give themselves more time. Uh, I got to some, figure out what to do. I see. I got so, some time to kill. Did they tell the space guys... Uh, the, on the floor. Sorry, I'm not very technical <laughs> speech here. Did they tell the space guys on the floor? Did they tell Mission Control on Earth that they'd messed up this time? Russia. Oh, they up. hadn't messed up. No, but the, the, yeah, they were but, in yeah, trouble. they had. They had done. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So they did another orbit, which is effectively like do you know when you're trying to drive into a parking space and you go black. And the you block me- well, around. you mess it up. Yeah. yeah. You go around. 
to try and get mm, back in again. Yeah. Mm. That's effectively well, what you, you did. You missed your turning on a roundabout. So you go all the yeah, way back all around. around. So it again. sounds like a big deal, but actually it's just, you know, it's just a casual orbit around the Earth. Yeah, it's no big deal. It's just no, around the Earth a little bit. It's NBD. fine. Sure. Yeah. So they went around the Earth again and they, uh, they had to, in that time, decide somewhere to land. So Leonov was the navigator. So he picked the landing spot and he decided to land near Perm, which is just west of the Ural Mountains, which is on Soviet soil. I'm familiar. Yes. Were they? So they <laughs> did they have to pick their landing spot? I'm imagining because this is part of the time when the Soviet Union existed. Mm-hmm. They would have had to pick that landing spot, not just based on where was a good place to land, but also where they wouldn't be captured by an enemy. So if they landed in China, it would have been an international incident. That so yeah, sucks so oh, much. Yeah. Imagine you're like, oh, I need to land my freaking spaceship, or I'm going to be dead, and then you have to think of geopolitical, like yeah. the geopolitical mm. climate. Whereas now it's much more straight. Just stay, avoid North Korea and probably North America, <laughs> like oh. you're, and you're good. I reckon China's going to kick off if we park there. <laughs> <laughs> It's like parking in a named parking spot. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so just to give you an idea of how fast they're moving. Um, fast? Quite fast. Yes. So during the, the spacewalk, and this is during the orbit. So during the spacewalk, which was 12 minutes and nine seconds, uh, they started over North Central Africa um, around like, you know, Southern Egypt and ended over Eastern Siberia, mm. which is in Europe. So they went from Africa to like in Eastern, 12 minutes to Eastern Europe in 12 minutes. Wow. That's speedy. That's quite quick. Quite quick. Yeah. yeah. So that, that next orbit around this, around the earth wasn't very much. They had to mm. figure out a place and be like, okay, we're landing here now. Yeah. And the only reason that isn't scary is because they have nothing to, they have no, re- like no relativity there. There's nothing else to compare your speed to. So you're shooting past like thousands of <laughs> kilometers an hour mm. and you're just doing a little spacewalk and letting out a little space fart. Yeah. To be fair. But then th- the thing is that this is long before we had much, anything in space really because this is before we even put people on the moon sure so there's no satellites to well very few satellites to compare yourself to yeah it's pretty empty so you know there wasn't much chance of being hit by something which not, is quite nice much news. News. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing now isn't it there's so much junk that we can't safely get out or in yeah, yeah. it's illegal I don't know which to, one is. well it's illegal <laughs> to both probably probably it's illegal to uh jettison something into space Correct. Like rubbish. tell that to neil armstrong uh, i mean prob- he, I probably he won't. jettisoned his poo into space Oh, but yeah, we talked about it. They're supposed to do that, though. No, I know. And that was before the laws, probably. <laughs> if I jettisoned a poo into my front garden, someone would have a word with me. But he did Someone it would space. definitely have a word. <laughs> I would have a word with you. <laughs> what? You don't even live with me. Jettison. <laughs> do you have like a cannon built up? Like, <laughs> why have you jettisoned a poo into my backyard? <laughs> Neil Armstrong did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to start a colony on another planet, just like Neil Armstrong. <laughs> you just don't have the power to, you know, break orbit. I'll get there one day. <laughs> Imagine if we one day discover the origins of our of the the first life on Earth was from another a, a poo from a another poo from another planet. <laughs> <laughs> Highly likely. It'd be funny if they died out as well. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. like we've outlived them. Well, their poo has outlived them. Yeah, exactly. That'd be really embarrassing. It'd be a really, really old poo. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're a really, really old poo. <laughs> You know, when it goes white and stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, like, one of the, the dog ones that go white. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? You know, poo goes white when it gets I do not orange. know that poo goes white when you leave it for a while. Oh, okay. Well, you learn something new every day. That's what this podcast I is didn't about. I want to learn. All right. <laughs> right, so Leonel <laughs> picked a little, <laughs> little museum of poo, James. A poosium. <laughs> Empurium. Poopium. Stop talking. <laughs> Poo poo pee pee You know when we get like reviews that are like the Chuggle Brothers of the science world. You know, I like the science, but they're so immature. Yeah. What are they talking about? That's the point. Poo poo pee pee. But they say it as an insult as though we don't know. I know, okay? That's the point. That's why me and James are here. That's why we're allowed in the room. Um, yeah, so we picked Perm, which is just west of the Ural Mountains, as I said. If you want to know where that is, Go somewhere else. This is not a geography podcast. I don't know. Go listen, Go to, listen to the Jog, jog guys. guys. I really hope that we can talk about the Jog Guys enough that eventually someone with a fascination <laughs> with geography starts up the Jog Guys and we can have like a sister podcast called the Jog Guys. That'd be great. I, I tried to search for Jog Guys, but I can't find it anywhere. Can we'll start link? it myself. <laughs> can you link me? <laughs> they basically, they felt themselves like spinning. That's very dangerous. Oh, I hate yes. That. So the rockets, after the rockets had like, you know, um, ignited and like pushed them in the right direction. The, the landing module was supposed to separate so that they were just 
on a landing module, but it had right. it done. There was one communication cable that was attaching them both. So they were spinning around effectively like on the, one of those, like, you know, our, like a Walter or something. Sure. Yeah. They were like pulling, ride. Yeah. yeah, they were pulling 10 Gs uh. in, in circular motion. Wow. That's uh, horrible. So, no thanks. Yeah. So imagine being on a Walter and how you feel a little bit sick. They were basically on that, but their eyes, like the blood vessels in their uh, eyes burst. Oh, yeah. Ten, 10 Gs, Very nice. by the way, is 10 times the force of gravity, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 10 times the gravity that you're feeling now. That's that's what they but were calling. But in spinning uh, motion. Yeah. So that was not great. Uh, they were hurtling towards the ground, spinning. Their, the blood vessels in their eyes had burst. And they basically had no control over what was going on. So they're Ow. just basically like, we're going to die now. Yeah. Pretty much. They're in a neutral bullet. That's what they're in. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But then luckily, that communication cable uh, just burnt up. Wow. On re-entry. Fantastic news. So obviously, when you're traveling through the atmosphere really quick, um, yeah. you can start to feel friction, effectively, from the air. Air yeah. And yeah, and when you're coming down from space... At 10G. Yeah. At a really... Yeah. That can destroy things. Like, actually burn through hulls. Which is why spacecrafts need to have such, you know, strong reinforced outsides. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So how did they get out of this one? You've, it's, you're doing like the Marvel Cinematic Universe way of telling <laughs> stories, which is to paint yourself into a horrible, horrible corner, <laughs> then figure a way out. So what's the way out? Captain Marvel well, swooped in. And... <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the start of Endgame, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it literally is. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I said, the communication cable just burnt so they weren't then attached to the the other part of the the ship, mm. and they were able to you know hit the rockets, the landing rockets, yeah, and uh, slow themselves down a bit. Oh, so the solution to it was luck. Oh, sheer luck. Oh, okay. Yeah, but this happened. That's um, not a good Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? No, that's a really, <laughs> really bad way to get. Like, oh, we were just really lucky. Thanos tripped and you know broke his neck. Yeah, it's kind of funny because like that's, <laughs> that would be considered really bad writing. Or you know, a rat, a, a rat climbed on a. On a piece of machinery and save the universe. Uh, it's five years. Rats go. No, yeah, that's fine. It would have happened at some point. It would have happened. Luke's, Luke's like, mm -hmm. I, didn't I have see, not seen this film. I saw the first half and I did not see the second so half. So the only reason they managed to save the universe is because by chance, a rat walked over a, a computer module and saved Ant-Man uh, Ant -Man from the quantum realm. So, you know, just about 10 seconds ago when I said that that would be really bad writing if they were writing that in the film... That's really bad writing. <laughs> yeah, but they do it in a way that makes you not think about it. So it's yeah. fine. <laughs> That's not good. That's like being like, oh, well, they got us drunk before we watched it, so we didn't care. No, but they, but they beat each other up and stuff, so it's, really, right. it's a fun time. Yeah, big CGI budget, so it's fine. Yeah, but Thor yeah, had cool. two hammers. Oh, my mistake. Did yeah. Thor have two hammers? He had two. It's but all then, fine, then. He usually has one hammer, but this time he had two hammers. But then, right. then Captain America picked one up, and he's not meant to pick it up. And he had it. I really had it. In his, in his hand, the hammer. Right. It was very good. Okay, this is why I'm not going to watch the second half of Avengers. <laughs> and then Black Panther went, E-Bombay. E-Bombay! That's what he did. <laughs> is this the stuff that Marvel fans get excited about? This is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I like watching films and being like, what a beautiful description of life at its perfect state. And you're like, Thor had two hammers and rat bit cable. The end. But hold on. Ant-Man got big. Oh, my oh, mistake. He got big, he man. Got big ant. He big, got big real, man. real big. He punched a space whale. He stepped on uh, someone and squashed oh. them. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. Right, and Spider-Man swung over the top know, of my, the foot. My assertion that I'm not that big a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe <laughs> It's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger every moment that you talk. Tell me a science story, Corey. So the landing module separated from the rest of the body of the spacecraft around about 100 kilometers from the Earth's, the Earth's surface. Okay, that's so still quite high. Still just in space. Yeah. Mm. But when you're hurtling at that speed, you want to maybe have a little bit more. So the only thing keeping it together was this one little cable. Mm -hmm. that, and then as soon as the cable burnt off, the entire rest of the spaceship just flew away. Wow. Not Ooh. flew away, it also fell, but... Sure, sure, but flew away from them. Yeah. Relatively. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. It's a very strong cable. Yeah, it's a strong cable. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> I love things like <laughs> well, that, though, broke. where you... Yeah, well, I love that things like that, where you build something, like, imagine, for example, they could have built the cables so that just one of them could still exist, and the lander would still stay stuck together, and then they put, like, ten of them in. And that's a great thing, because then yeah, you have ten yeah. times more force than you need to keep the ship together. Yeah. But then... If one of them is the only one still holding on, you're then screwed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And like, you want to be able to communicate with the rest of the ship. Yeah. 
until you tried to jettison it. Yes. <laughs> Which, yeah. yeah, so uh, luckily the parachute deployed and they just started swinging gently Aww, all the way cute. to the ground. What a nice ending. Well, until the rockets hit in and uh, they hit the ground with a jolt. Which was, you know, not quite as fun. Uh, they were in six and a half feet of snow. That's a crash. What? Buried? Well, not buried, as in the landing module. Yeah, went landed down, down six. Wow. Yeah, because oh. this was in, I think, cheap, Siberia cheap in March. Service. So it was quite cold. Yeah. It was like at night, it got to negative 30 degrees. Ooh. And how long were they in there before everyone found them? Well, that's the thing. Um, the Soviet Union didn't know that they'd <gasps> landed. Whoa. Or even really where they'd landed at all. They didn't even like go on, like, find what? my iPhone and just ping them and see find the location. Find my astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> it had Android. It just pressed, like, find. It goes, <laughs> the ship ping. goes, ping, 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 ping. Big noise. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. And they listen really carefully. Well, that's the thing. They, they didn't know where they were at all. In fact, no one really knew what was going on because they'd stopped recording it for TV. Uh, because there were problems at the start. Right, yeah, sure. Right. And obviously Soviet Russia, you don't want to yes. let anyone know you're doing anything wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's probably every country, but sure, carry on. No, fair enough. <laughs> especially I mean, especially Ru- Soviet especially Russia. Especially Soviet Russia. Especially Soviet Russia. Or do you just believe that because your country's at war with Soviet Russia? Do you know both. what's happening in the world right now? <laughs> is Scotland at war with Soviet Russia? Yes, yeah, Scotland is in a cold war with Soviet <laughs> Russia. I don't really Who know. is the coldest? Probably Soviet <laughs> Russia. <laughs> No, what Scotland you... gets pretty cold. <laughs> it does. No, I don't really know what's going on with Soviet Russia. Carry on. It doesn't exist. That's what. Oh, they're... sure, sure. No, I, just, I know that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this is not his guys. <laughs> My pronouns are his guys. <laughs> You're making me have a coughing fit. <laughs> As I said, they landed in snow in freezing conditions. Um. So they obviously would have wanted to get out of the... They can't catch a break, can they? Yeah, no, they, they would have wanted to get out of the space the spaceship, yeah. right? The landing yeah. module. But they couldn't get up if they were buried in snow. They weren't buried. I just said they they landed in it. How many feet? Six and a half. Oh, okay. That's not too much. Yeah. Cool. They um, could build some stairs or something by digging. Again, they're in the landing module. Yeah, they were probably tall enough. The landing module is bigger than up. six feet. Right. I thought you meant it was six oh. feet. Oh. It no, was like six the feet top under. of the, lo- the, the module. The snow is six feet. Right. Like high. Not on them, just relative to the ground. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah. That was probably quite helpful for the landing, though. I mean, yeah, I guess. A bit of like, yeah. bit less of a bump. Softened it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Except, so they wanted to get out of the landing module, obviously. Uh, but the bolt had exploded. And also, That's it was fun. against a birch tree. So... <laughs> What, so the door was against a birch tree? The door tree. was against a birch tree. Wow. The bolt had exploded. Of course it was. So instead of opening, it was just basically locked shut. And they By were stuck inside. Oh yeah, they were stuck inside. <laughs> it's just like a big example imagine of Murphy's like, Law yeah. yeah imagine getting back from space where your suit like expanded so much you couldn't open a door and then you tried to land and you messed that up and then you managed to fix it and then you landed and then a tree is standing in your way <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, screw you universe yeah. imagine dying from a tree surviving the cold <laughs> bitter vacuum of space <laughs> surviving terrible re-entry Only crash tr- landing and then a tree blocks your door and you're like oh, I can't get out <laughs> uh, so according to the spacecraft's orientation system which must have been working now um, <laughs> thank god for that <laughs> they landed deep in the siberian forest almost 200 kilometers 200 2000 kilometers which is about uh 1250 miles away from their target that's quite f- that imagine mm. if you were playing a game of darts and <laughs> oh no missed i missed it 1250 <laughs> miles <laughs> <laughs> to be fair when you're shooting from that far away it's a pretty good job yeah, but you're a professional pilot. A professional. professional. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if you imagine the entire Earth as a dartboard, yeah. I guess that's quite close. It's a 3D to dartboard. It's difficult. Yeah. yeah. Now the world's flat, man. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Great. <laughs> Moving on. Facts. Um, <laughs> I love the idea that people actually listen to this think I believe any of the stuff I say. <laughs> so as I said, they were stuck. They... They didn't really know what to do. They had to assess their situation, but they really couldn't because they were inside this tiny little landing module. Did they have like a phone? No, I don't mean that as a stupid question. Did they have like a a way of communicating with Russia or Soviet Union? No, they had a gun. Oh, great. America. Just one. Oh. 
Yeah, but lots of ammunition. How many bullets? Oh, lots of ammunition. Okay, yeah, lots. Cool, fine. lots. I don't have an exact number, just lots. Well, that's thank God a Why gun is useful against snow. Shoot the tree. <laughs> 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 I'm digging my way out. How, <laughs> did, how did they get out from the tree then? So they just pushed real hard. Oh, yeah. What, and knocked the tree down? Well, they pushed real hard <laughs> um, to get the bolts out. And then they shoved shoved the door Yeah. so that it was dislodged from the tree and just you know slid away into the snow. Like a little snake. <laughs> like... It was alive the whole time. <laughs> no, it just it, they just lost it. So were they actually looking for them, or were they just? I'm sure they're, they're like, looking for them. Mm -hmm. but they just don't, oh, know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. Well, they're not just going to be like, nah. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe they were like, oh, they're probably dead. We'll just run off them. So people came in the late, later on in the afternoon, um, and a helicopter came by and put down a, a rope ladder. Unfortunately, uh, in spacesuits, you can't climb a rope ladder. <laughs> <laughs> they have to get naked. <laughs> uh, no, oh. they just kind of flew away. So another aircraft arrived and it dropped down some supplies for them. Um, it was That's a bottle kind. of, yeah, a bottle of cognac. Is that uh, alcohol? Yes, it is. Okay. It shattered on the ground. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> How sad would that be if you're like, you know, from Soviet Russia, you're ready to get drunk after a horrible time in space. And Yay, then, alcohol, and finally. Then just smashes on the floor. <laughs> Fuck you, Germans. <laughs> the thing is that um, the thing is that that would like make you more susceptible to hypothermia as well. Well, being drunk, drinking it. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, it'd make you feel warmer, but it would not make you warmer at all. You're right. more likely to die if you drink okay. the cognac. <laughs> um, they also dropped down a blunt axe. Uh, it specified that it was a blunt axe, which is slightly less useful than an actual sharp axe. Yeah. Yeah, and um, they also sent down some wolfskin boots and warm winter clothes. That uh, got snagged on branches as they fell, so it didn't hit the ground. Um, oh my god! <laughs> it's like they were just teasing them. Like, Oops! <laughs> yeah, so civilians kept on trying to help them, but they were not equipped to save two cosmonauts from the wilderness. Sure, so, or indeed to just drop really simple things on the floor without breaking it. Yeah, I mean, really, like, who would have thought? Why would you think to drop a bottle of booze? That just doesn't make sense. Catch this glass. <laughs> I'm going to throw, throw this dart down to you. Just Hello. catch it with your teeth. Also, no, hang on. More importantly, they, not only did they throw alcohol to the floor, they threw an axe. They were like, oh my God. Meat. Maybe that's why they that's threw the blood. That's why it was blood. That's why it was blood. <laughs> Okay, that yeah, that makes me feel a bit stupid because I was like, why didn't they throw down a sharp axe? I mean, I think <laughs> throwing an axe from any height, no, you know, yeah, it, doesn't it doesn't matter how sharpness. sharp it is. <laughs> As I said, the daylight was gone and they're facing a completely different threat. They were quite sweaty, uh, so much so that their spacesuits, which were you know airtight, had filled up to their ankles with sweat. Wow, trench disgusting. Foot. Yeah. Well, the thing is that obviously when trench, you're cold trench foot. Uh, and you've got sweat on you, it's going to make you colder. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it was, because what it's it was, designed to do. So what they did was they opened their visors and did a handstands and all the sweat came out. Yes. Well, that's the thing. Uh, it got to minus 30 degrees Celsius. So they went into the capsule, uh, which again, doesn't have a door on it <laughs> and got naked. Um, they then rinsed, like, you know, um, what's it called? Rinsed. Rinsed. Like, rinsed? Uh, rung. They then, rung. They then wrung out their underwear to dry as much as possible. Got rid of the, the bulky, like, outer suit. Um, and tried to get rid, of, like, took off their uh, the other suit they were wearing, the softer one, inside the bulky one, um, and tried to dry those as much as possible. Put the soft ones back on uh, with their underwear and their gloves and boots. So they weren't wearing the big bulky outer spaceship stuff. They were just wearing like the nice form fitting inside one. Uh, then they climbed into the <laughs> they climbed into the capsule and uh, fell asleep. They spoon. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Did it they cuddle? doesn't say that they cuddled. They should. I cuddled. reckon they did. Always cuddle if you're cold. I mean, they probably did cuddle. I reckon they Good. did. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so they woke up next morning uh, to the sound of an airplane circling overhead, uh, which was quite good. Um, they fired a flare gun. Uh, and they shot down the airplane. And everyone died. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a small rescue team uh, came along to help them out. It was five men on skis. <laughs> I actually don't know if it was five men on skis. It was just a group of men on skis. You know, cross-country skis. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, uh, so there were, you know, rescue people and also a fellow cosmonaut uh, who was... <laughs> what? Oh, a fellow cosmonaut and an eager videographer. So there was... Cool. They, 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 was that just by chance or were they looking? No, they, they were the rescue team. Oh, they were the actual rescue yeah, team. Yeah, so they sent okay, some okay, guys, okay, okay. Uh, another cosmonaut, 
and then someone with a video camera. Right. Okay. Yeah. I thought we were still talking about civilians. They cut down some trees. They built a log cabin and a fire and they stayed there for the night. It was all very good. Casually. This is the end of all the bad stuff, by the way. You don't need to be on edge. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. This is it the... just seems like it's leading up to like something going horribly wrong. And then they all died. Then the and big then... bad wolf came over and blew down <laughs> their log cabin because they built it with wood <laughs> like fools. And then the blunt axe murderer killed them all. <laughs> with their own blunt axe. <laughs> Yeah, so they built a log cabin. Um, they had cheese, sausage, and bread. That is a sad part of the story. Oh. <laughs> As if their day couldn't get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they then had to ski five and a half miles to the helicopter landing site the next day. I'm assuming they brought spare skis with them then. Yeah. Yeah, of course <laughs> just <they did>. checking. <laughs> Imagine if the ski men turned up and were like, damn doing, it, we didn't bring any more skis. They're doing a tandem ski. <laughs> just get on my back and I'll ski you. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> They were then flown back to the, the launch site where they were uh, greeted by uh, Yuri Gagarin and Sergei Korolev. Ah, oh, nice. Yuri, the first yes. uh, man in space. Uh, the next day, they stood before a government committee in Leninsk to answer questions about their flight, and Leonov's only comment on the flight was about his historic spacewalk. Provided with a special suit, man can survive and work in open space. I'm assuming he said that in Russian. Well, yeah, obviously. That in <laughs> Just checking. I'm translating it. I don't what? know what the. I don't well, know you're what... translating from Russian? Come yeah, on, that's really cool. That it's English. written in Russian. Oh, is it really? No. Oh. It's a... <laughs> Shut up. I was like really impressed when I like, know you spoke there. Russian. I don't speak Russian. I merely read it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the story, you guys. Wow. Good Yay. story. Happy yeah. ending. Very happy ending. That was a happy ending. I know, I'm quite happy I thought, with it. I thought it was going to end quite badly because of all the bad things. All the bad things happened, but then it, you know, they, but they then, stuck through in the end. Just like a good Marvel film, it ended on a extended Infinity War. Ended really happy. Did they live a happy life after Endgame that? Endgame did not end happy either. Um, well, they, they did well, and didn't. I don't know what happened to them at all. I know that one of them went back into space and the other one just didn't. And to be honest, I wouldn't either. Wow, what a badass. He went back. That's yeah. cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the it. show, that's you guys. That's the show. Yeah. Nice. Congrats to Thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave a nice wee comment? You can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Or send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can find me at NotCory everywhere. Find me at Jamkin everywhere. You can find me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hell yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah.